Hey, what's up, Scott Balker here with Imagine Age Creation Films, and today we're talking about these, the tiny little Atlas Ultra CF Express Type B cards from OWC. The cards are so fast, you might want to grab them before they get away. So before we get started, a little housekeeping. OWC did send these cards to me for review and to test them, but no money has changed hands and OWC has no say whatsoever in the review, with the exception of an acceptable release date to make sure that they were approved as intended. So you can rest assured that you'll get the same old, fair, lovable, honest review as always. So if the thought of a headbanging puppet makes you laugh, <laughs> subscribe. So OWC sent me a two terabyte and a one terabyte version of their new Atlas Ultra CF Express 4.0 Type B cards, as well as their Thunderbolt reader and two different SSDs to well, check out and review. Uh, I use these while on the feature this summer and as well as my nature adventure uh, this late summer. And let me tell you, I've thrown a ton of data at these, but We'll focus mainly on the CF Express cards uh, and, well, and the reader, um, but I'll throw in the stats from the other two as well, since they are, well, deserving of talking about. So these cards were developed to get the absolute maximum out of CF Express standard. Their new 4.0 controllers internally give them some of the fastest read and write speeds possible. Now, a couple of quick points so you'll have context. First. These cards are pre-production and have previous labels on them. The new cards are identical, but will have faster speeds printed on them. And now a note about speeds. You'll find a lot of claims out there about speeds on, well, anything. But in this review, you'll find maximum speeds, advertised minimum speeds, and actual real-world speeds. And let me break them down briefly. Maximum speeds are simply the peak performance these cards can ever achieve. And there are certain instances where they can achieve or get relatively close to those speeds, but they can't perform that speed for honestly more than a few seconds. Then there's a minimum sustained speeds, and these are advertised speeds. Now these speeds are not false, but they are in an absolutely perfect condition which you'll never really be able to be in for long or even recreate. That is in no way saying the manufacturers are stretching the truth or lying. It's, it's just not real world conditions. Where reality sets in for all of CF Express is heat. Heat causes throttling to keep from destroying these tiny little cards. Now heat soak it's a term that means the device's thermal capacity has been reached for safe operation, meaning it can no longer continue to operate at the current performance and keep the heat in check. So these cards and every other card will thermal throttle to a level that they can sustain safely. In the world of filmmaking and these cards, this will come into play under two conditions, writing and reading. Technically, those are the only two conditions these cards can do, but in our case, one of them is more critical than the other. If a camera has the ability to continuously write to the media at a set rate, then the cards simply cannot throttle below that threshold or data won't be recorded. On the V-Raptor, uh, the max data rate is 800 megabytes a second. Now, this seems rather low compared to the ratings of these cards, but again, 100% accuracy is paramount. It can't miss a beat. Now with reading, getting the data off faster is nice to have, but if it were to slow down, well, you'd still be okay unless you were reading from the cards live, which, why? Uh, so I'll be reporting the speeds and their conditions so you can see where reality lives. The good news, the cards work and work well. The bad news is, well, they do have a heat soak limit. Well, that's below their advertised sustained data rates. But again, everybody does. That's life with CF Express. It's an extremely tiny device with a ton of data in it. So what are the numbers? Let's start with the one terabyte card. 
For peak speeds, I recorded about 2,700 megabytes a second for read and 1,500 megabytes per second write. Now, this is for only a few seconds under specific data conditions for read. Write speeds seem to be stable across, well, various data conditions. Now, this is peak. Read peak lasted up to about four or five seconds and then would go down to the advertised sustained rate, which was about 1,500 megabytes a second. Same as the write. Now, it could sustain these speeds for a little over a minute before heat soak sets in and, well, it must throttle. When it did, read and write speeds fell to 1,440 megabytes a second with an occasional dip to about 1,200. But the important measurement here is real world with heat soak. We need to consider the lower number for writes because you can't miss a single bit when writing. So if 1200 megabytes per second is the read write speed that you can count on, on 99% of the situations, that's what you need to use. The slowest I could make the card write was about 1140 megabytes a second. And that was an extremely hot operation environment. But think about this. The Red V Raptor at 8K, 120 frames a second, can record at a maximum sustained 800 megabytes a second. That means that these cards will work all day, every day, in virtually any condition at max data rates with the Red. And thus, they are now officially Red approved and Scotty approved. The two terabyte card performs a little different explainable by density. For peak reads, I achieved right at 3,000 megabytes a second and 1,400 megabytes per second right. Peak on reads was not for more than a few seconds before it settled in around write speed of about 1,400 megabytes a second. Advertised sustained rates were achievable for about one minute before heat soak sets in and it must throttle. That real world throttled measurement is 1170 megabytes per second for read and write. Now, quick note on the 3000 megabytes a second. Now this was using their Thunderbolt reader and Thunderbolt 4 has a max data rate of 2800 megabytes per second. So there is caching that's playing in the system in order to get over 3000 megabytes a second and also why it can't sustain it for more than a couple of seconds. Now, density allows this card to peak higher because it can read from more cells at the same time, simply because there are more of them to spread the love and the load. And then the density also works against it over time uh, as it has twice as many cells to dissipate the heat in the exact same size package. So. 1170 megabytes per second is the real world sustained number for read and write. Both well above Red's requirement. So, Red approved and Scotty approved. It's two terabytes, two thumbs. Uh, I can't tell you how valuable it is to have large capacity, reliable cards on set. You, you don't wanna make a mistake. You don't wanna miss a single bit of the action. Bit, data, get it, and well, I could count on these cards and, and I love that. Briefly, on the other devices, uh, this Thunderbolt reader, um, by far the fastest reader I have ever used and it enabled me to put these cards and other cards to the test. It was an incredible reader uh, and a small portable heater at times when pushing it to the limits. Um, joking aside, it, it never failed, it just kept chugging. The two terabyte Envoy Pro FX Thunderbolt external SSD has been, well, honestly, my favorite drive to work from uh, as it's blatantly fast, peaking at around 5,800 megabytes a second for a couple of seconds, and then settling in around 2,600 megabytes a second read speeds continuously in real world numbers and sustaining about 2,200 megabytes a second write speed all day long. It's built like a tank and I experienced zero heat soak with it, which honestly surprised me. But again, it is a giant hunk of aluminum. So there's, you know, science involved with that. Uh, the two terabyte Electron USB SSD was no slouch in performance, but more tuned to USB and 
limited by it as well. So they can make the drive much smaller than the Envoy. And uh, I achieved speeds of around 1199 megabytes a second peak read, settling down to a more sustained 980 megabytes a second for the real world. For writes, uh, 940 megabytes a second for both peak and real world. Now this is mostly the limitation with USB and well, the size here. Now what I will point out here is OWC is not being limited by a standard form factor. They, they built these drives to perform at their best, even in heat soak conditions. They simply made them as large as they needed to be to dissipate the heat. Uh, kudos to OWC for that, because a lot of manufacturers want them to make them as small as possible so they can advertise the small. Small is great, reliable is everything. So what are the pros and cons of these cards? Well, pros, the red approved. Some of the fastest cards I've ever tested and they're reliable. Cons, they don't quite measure up to the advertising, but I do have to be fair here and say that no other brand does either. They all use the perfect conditions for advertised sustained rates. And honestly, I'd love to see those conditions because they're probably liquid nitrogen con controlled heat sinks where they're like a giant cube where they're reading and writing these cards. I say this isn't really a fault of OWC here as it's kind of a general game in the industry that they play. And well, OWC has to compete in that market. so. They have to give similar conditions to their cards so they can get those high numbers to compete with. Well, with what others advertise in their perfect condition test so they can play on the same field. Now, another con is, well, the price. They're at nearly twice the price as others. They can be a hard pill to swallow, but in the end, these are investments. Investments in your sanity sometimes, um, but they will pay off over time, especially in the downloads later with the higher speeds. So what do you think about these cards and these drives and the reader? Uh, are, are they something that you're looking at? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, remember to like and subscribe and support the channel by purchasing anything through the affiliate links down below. Also, you can really stand out and become a channel member as well if you know want to be part of the cool kids club like these top tier members and as always as i like to leave it don't let your passion center around your life let your life center around your passion